Hello and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing how to use isolates in Flutter. So let's see what isolates are. So isolates are similar to threads in Unix, but they do not share memory like threads do. For this reason, the communication or the data sharing between isolates are done through messages. Okay. So a Flutter app is also a single threaded isolate. It has its own event loop for handling events and a queue for storing tasks. Isolates help to execute code in a different process. So if you want to execute a heavy operation and we don't want to block the main isolate thread, then we need to use isolates. There are two ways to use isolates. One is using the compute function at a high level and the second method is directly using the isolate class and you can use send port and receive port for exchanging messages between isolates. In this video, I'll be showing how to use isolates with the help of compute method and I'll be doing another video uh, on how to use isolates at a low level using send port and receive port for exchanging messages. Okay, so let's start. So to use the compute function, we need to import the foundation classes first. So let me import that. So after importing, we will be writing a new class, basically an animation widget, which will be animating on the screen continuously. And we'll be doing some heavy operation on the main isolate thread and also a separate isolate thread. And we will see what is the impact on the animation. Okay. So let's write the class first. So that will be class animation widget extends set full widget and a state animation widget state that extends state animation widget with ticker provider state mixin so if you want to know what is state ticker state provider and mixin you can watch a couple of my other videos about animation so I'll be providing the link in the description and also you can tap the i button on the right corner of the video for more information. We will be concentrating only on isolates here. Okay. So we need init state and the build method and a couple of variables. The first one is the animation controller. And the second one is uh, animation of type border radius. Since we are going to animate only the border radius of the widget. Now we need to initialize both variables. So go to init state. And animation controller is equal to animation controller. Duration, let's set it to one second. And second parameter, we sync this and we need to listen to a status so add a status listener and if the status is equal to animation status dot complete we're going to reverse animation else if it is dismissed we're going to start the animation so animation dot forward okay now let's initialize the border radius variable. So border radius is equal to border radius tween. The first parameter is begin. So we are going to start with 100 radius. So border radius dot circular, 100. And the end will be animating back to zero. Call dot animate with curved animation parent is animation controller and let's add the curve as well so curve curves dot linear okay now we need to start the animation so call animation controller dot forward this will start the animation now we need to build the ui for this animation widget so animation builder with animation border radius 
and the builder will take the context and child. The child will be a Flutter logo of size 200. Alignment dot bottom center width 350, height of 200. Decoration box decoration. Let's apply a linear gradient. Begin top left. Colors will be blue accent and red accent. Okay. And the border radius will be border radius dot value. Okay. So don't forget to dispose the controller. So override the dispose method and call animation controller dot dispose. Now we will add the animation widget to the main UI and run the app. Okay, it's launching. Now we have the beautiful animation here and we will be adding two more buttons and on press of the button we will be doing some heavy operation and we will see how it impacts the animation. Okay. Now we have a future wide variable compute future is equal to future dot value. Okay. So let's add button one. That's going to return a future builder of type void. And the future will be compute future. Builder will have the context and snapshot. Okay, so it's going to return a button. And let's set the text to main isolate. And on press of the button, going to call a new function main create main isolate callback and pass in the context and the snapshot. Copy the function, add button to text secondary isolate, and function will be create secondary isolate callback. Now let's write the function void callback. So this is going to return a function okay so the build context and the async snapshot snapshot so we're going to check if snapshot dot connection state is equal to connection state dot done then we are going to return a function Otherwise, we are going to return null, so that will disable the button until then. Now we need the second function, create secondary isolate callback. So copy the function and rename it. Okay. Now the first function is supposed to return a callback. So for that, we are going to write a function future int. I'm going to say compute on main isolate. So this will be doing an operation on the main isolate. So the main thread on which uh, this animation is running. So return await future dot delayed. So I'm going to give a delay of 100 milliseconds and then call a function which is going to be a heavy function. So a Fibonacci function. So create compute secondary isolate. That's going to call compute. So this will create a new isolate. So this will be accepting a function. And second one is a parameter. So this is isolate class. You can see the compute function. So that's inside the foundation. So basically this compute will be creating a new thread 
which is separate from the main thread and passing the passing in the code to execute in that thread so basically it will not be blocking the main thread okay so let's write the Fibonacci function so this will be a recursive function and it's going to take a lot of computing power and memory so our Fibonacci function is now complete now we need to assign the future the compute future so compute future is equal to compute on main isolate so when it returns we need to it will return a function and we need to enable the button so called set state okay so do the same thing inside the secondary isolate change the function okay perfect now we will write a snack bar to show the value from the Fibonacci function scaffold dot of context dot show snack bar a new snack bar okay with content message okay all right so call show snack bar when the value returns so i'm going to say may isolate done with the value copy that and i'm going to change that to secondary isolate done okay now let's add the two buttons to the main ui add button one and add button two okay run the app okay now it's running now let me change uh, change 50 to 40 because it will take too much time okay i'm going to click on main isolate now so you can see the animation is frozen when until it returns so when you click on secondary isolate the app crashes and let me tell you what is the reason so the reason is the compute function will be expecting a method that is not an instance of a class that should be the entry method or it should be a static method okay so as you can see the Fibonacci function is inside the class right now so let's fix that let's add static okay I'm going to rerun the app okay it's running okay click on main isolate so it's going to freeze animation because it's running on the main thread secondary isolate is running perfectly now it's not blocking the main isolate okay so the second way to fix it is cut the function and paste it outside the class so the method is not an instance of a class okay so rerun the app okay it's updated now click on main isolate process animation click on secondary isolate it's running smoothly okay that works perfect okay 
Now, what if I add one more button, an outline button, child text, I'm going to say test button, and on press, I'm going to leave it empty. So the button will be enabled. And if you click on main isolate, and before it returns, if you try to click on that button, you will not be able to click it because it freezes the entire thread, the entire UI thread. So if you click on the secondary isolate, and if you try to click on test button, before and after it returns, it is clickable, right? So that means it's not blocking the main UI isolate thread, right? Since uh, secondary isolate is creating a new isolate thread and running on it, okay? So that's a whole idea. So I'll be doing a separate video on low level isolate programming using send port and receive port. So that's all in this video. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Hit the bell icon for notifications. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.